Hello everyone, welcome. So it's a it's a webinar regards to a combination of MACD and Bollinger's in order to time your entries and exits. So it's how to combine those two uh, indicators, popular indicators, identify entry points, identify stop loss, stop loss levels, target levels, and so on and so forth. So um, not sure how many of you have uh, seen before our webinars exclusively for Bollinger Barnes and another one exclusively for MACD. But even if you haven't seen one, I'm going to add in the handout section uh, the, the slides for uh, with the more details in regards to uh, how uh, in regards to MACD and in regards to Bollinger. Just give me a second. I have already uploaded on the handout section today's slides as well. So, uh, trading with MACD, and we need trading with Bollinger's as well. Just an extra material that you might uh, find useful. Oops, I need to mute Skype for now. <clears throat> Just give me a second. Bollinger Bounds, where is my Bollinger Bounds? Trade in with Macadie. Okay, maybe I don't have it saved as PDF, but I have uploaded the handout section, the MACD one. So don't worry about the other one. I'm going to figure out where is it. <clears throat> Sorry for that, guys. Give me just a second. Okay, perfect. Here it is as well. So I have uh, upload just to clarify those that they are just attended. I have uploaded three handouts. The very first one is the is today's slides. The second one and the third are like exclusive webinar slides for Bollinger Bands and MACD respectively. Okay, so as usual. Before we go through and start our session, I would like to make sure that you can hear me loud and clear. Um, this webinar is recorded as usual, so you're going to receive the, um, the recording afterwards, possibly tonight or tomorrow morning. OK, so I, until I have a feedback in regards to the audio, uh, I, I will go through the disclaimer as usual. So. This material is provided as general marketing communication for information purposes only and does not constitute an independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing an investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information containing an indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment leveraged products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk, of risk for which the users are solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. Risk warning, trading leverage uh, products such as forex and derivatives may not be suitable for all investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk involved, take into account your investment objectives and level of experience before trading. And if necessary, seek independent advice. You can find the full risk disclosure on our website along with all the uh, legal documentation that you might want to check. So. Uh, 
where did I find the handout set notes, uh, Robert? Robert, um, when once you open the go to webinar um, uh, link, you have you have less, something like a toolbar, right? And at the very bottom, there is uh, uh, there is uh, the, there are the handout section. I think that you have a toolbar like for raising a question or for making a question or and also at the very bottom you you will be that you will see the handout section if not let me know okay so this is the email address got it thanks okay perfect so you found it um so webinars at, at hfm.com our email address okay means your support team are replying to this email so ask anything you want i'm here to help as usual so let's start i'll skip myself i'll skip Stuart, and i'll go straight to what we're going to cover today so what we're going to cover today first of all i'm going to try very very briefly okay because very, very briefly of what is MACD, what does it represent, what signals does it represent, what is Bollinger's, what it represents as well. But I'm going to do it a bit briefly because today is not about introduction of, of, of MACD or introduction about Bollinger's, but it's how to use um, uh, these two indicators. Obviously, once you have studied them a lot, a lot and you have, um, you understand them. So how to combine them in order to help you uh, filter out um, any noise in the market, uh, identify downside momentum, upside momentum, and with this way, identify possible entries, but also exits. So that's why today we're going to go through how to combine those two in order to build your own trading strategy based on these two indicators. Um, so also filtering the periods of downside or upside momentum, entering the trades when price is likely to make a profitable move, choosing an appropriate stop, choosing an appropriate uh, target level, and um, as usual, you can you can uh, ask anything you want. I will try to reply as soon as possible. So let's start. Um, okay, this is, I mentioned trading strategy. So uh, the strategy that I'm going to present today uh, combines MACD and Bollinger's is based on a four hour chart and 15 minutes chart. So even though we usually say don't stick to one time frame, okay, this particular uh, this particular strategy involves both time frames, four hour and 15 hours. So from the four hour one, we're going to identify the trend. And from the 15 minutes chart, we're going to identify the entry point. OK, it's one of those rare cases that we use um, two very different time frames uh, to uh, take an entry. So this is uh, this is the setup that we're going to use. Uh, for today's strategy. So MACD indicator two initially used as trend recognition tool, Bollinger's in order uh, to identify entry levels. Uh, and these are this this will be monitoring a four hour chart and 15 minutes chart. And the signal will be given if, if, what, uh, uh, with uh, either the Bollinger band crossing um or pin bar reversal signals so these are going to be uh the two signals that we're going to uh, get uh in order to enter the market so very briefly as i mentioned what is macd uh, and what are these signals and etc so macd as you can see at the very bottom this is how it looks like is another indicator uh, one of the most famous, uh, I don't know how many of you are using it, but it's, it's one of the most famous indicators uh, that um, has been uh, created, developed uh, back in the 
oops, sorry, back in the 1970s, so it's not a very old one, and it's a momentum indicator, okay? So you can spot momentum, you can spot whether the sellers are increasing or whether the buyers are increasing. So that's why we can, it can be useful for identifying co convergence or divergence as well. What we mean by convergence or divergence? If the price action is suggesting an upwards momentum, but the MACD is presenting a downwards momentum, that's divergence. So they don't move on the same side. They move, they present two contradictory signals. So that means that the trend might run out of steam. So MACD is a very powerful momentum indicator for identifying momentum, but also confirming whether uh, the trend is about to end and reverse or whether it will continue. So convergence, divergence. It is also very useful to identify trend strength direction. Uh, remember that we cannot get direction of the trend for, from every single other indicator, uh, but this one combines direction, momentum, we can time the duration of the trend along with the trend strength. So it's both a trending and a momentum oscillator. Okay, and why is that? Why is it so powerful? Because the calculations behind MACD uh, are pretty much moving averages. So MACD using, using solely moving averages in order to create this histogram along with the signal line. Uh, so the the formula behind it is move is the is several moving averages based on the uh, price action, obviously. Uh, so that's why it's unbounded as well. And that's why it's also a trending and a momentum oscillator um, as well. So let me just, here we are. So that, this is how it composed, but I think I skipped. I think I'm, I have skipped by mistake one day. No, I didn't, okay. So here is how it looks like, as I said, we have the histogram, we have the red line, otherwise called signal line. So the signal line, okay, um, identifies the turn turns. What we mean by that? Identifies the direction, identifies when the, um, when the uh, trend is about to, uh, change from upwards to downwards or from downwards to upwards or whether it's consolidating. So it ad and identifies any reversals. So it gives us the red line, give us direction and reversal signals. The histogram, okay, this histogram, the pipelines over here, the, the pipeline, sorry, the histogram lines over here, they don't present direction but they present momentum. So as we see the histogram increasing to the downside, for example, like this one, it means that sellers are increasing. So there is a lot of selling pressure and increasing selling pressure. If the is histogram is above zero and increasing to the upside, then this is when the bulls are in control and then uh, there is a, a, an increasing bullish bias, okay? Uh, just uh, come on. And I just notice, oops, yeah, here we are. But I just noticed that. Okay, so. Uh, okay, this is, these are the formulas behind it. You don't need to know them, but it's good to understand them, okay, to understand uh, how they are uh, composed, from what they are composed and what they indicate. But the reason why I keep insisting on presenting some formulas is because 
with this way you can understand uh, how it works. So you see, we have for the formula for, for the creation of MACD, we are using three different uh, moving averages. Exponential moving averages, the very first one is nine period one, the second is 12 period one, and the third one is 26 period one. So a low one, a medium one, and a long one. So with this way, uh, by th this is how the histogram of MACD has been created, the signal line of MACD has been created. And if you closely observe uh, the formula, you will in realize that the signal line, the red line, is a moving average itself, right? It's a nine period exponential moving average, not of the price action, but of our MACD line. MACD line, however, is the difference between the 12 period moving average and the 26 period moving average. So, uh, so it's the, the red line, the signal line is a smooth out, it's a, it, it, it smooths out the movement of the MACD line and interacts with it to produce signal lines. So, um, So these feature uh, bars that appear as histogram, that they are either below or above the histogram, uh, they, the zero line, sorry. It tells us how much momentum a price has based on the calculations on the difference between 26 and 12 period moving average and nine period moving average. Okay, so okay, you don't need to remember, it's just for your own, own understanding. So I will move on. Ask me anything you want, by the way. I'm here to help. Um, just a second, I'm lost a bit. Where's my notes? Yeah, there we are. Okay. A bit more of uh, a bit more about MACD. Um, so, uh, as you might notice earlier, let me get back again uh, where I have a chart. Yeah, here it is. So, it composed by three things the signal line, the red line, which is the nine period moving averages, the histogram, okay which is the difference between the 26 and 12 uh, moving average. Um, and the zero line. The zero line is just, it's just this zero level in which we can identify when the, the histogram is below it, above it, or signal line is below it, above it. It's just a center line, a zero line. As I said, the red line signals identifies reversals, histogram identifies momentum, okay? And how far away the signal line is, up, is from the histogram, it also shows us momentum, the, the strength, actually the, the, the height, the height of the histogram and how far away the signal line is from the histogram show us also how how long the trend will last okay so let me just get back to where we have been we're going to see examples so don't worry about it but what you need to keep in mind is that once histogram and signal line are both above zero that implies to demand to rising demand, to bullish momentum. If the histogram signal line are below zero and they keep detecting and detecting, they keep extending below, away from zero, that implies to supply, so that implies to selling pressure. Everything matters in MACD. The direction of the lines, the, how, uh, ha the height of the histogram, um, any crossing of signal above the zero line, any crossing of signal line above the histogram, um, everything matters. And also the, the, the slot, because it may show dramatic rise or dramatic uh, fall. So.
These are very, very br briefly the signals that we can get from MACD. If we see MACD lines, and by referring to MACD lines, I'm referring to both signal line, the red line, and histogram. If they both cross the horizontal zero axis above the zero, above the zero line, uh, that's a bullish signal. So if they turn from negative to bullish to positive one, so from below the zero line to above the zero line, that's bullish signal. If they change from positive to negative, so from being above the zero line to below the zero line, that's the bearish signal. Okay. If, if let's assume that both of them, both signal line and MACD line, uh, both are above. Uh, let me let me show you actually on the MT4. So ignore the chart. Okay, focus on the on the info, on the uh, MACD over here. That's cable. So if if can you see over here that. MACD and signal line are below zero, and signal and this and the histogram is above the signal, so it's be well way below the signal line. Can you see that over here? So that implies once the MACD histogram falls below the signal line, that's adding to the bearish pressure. That it means that indeed we have bearish signal, but we have an increasing bearish momentum so more and more and more sellers are entering so that's why that that it means that there is a lot of run to the downside still but if histogram goes above the signal line so turns up and rises above the signal line like here that's a bullish signal but you can tell me andrea they are both below zero how come and this is a bullish signal this implies that we might either see a correction to the upside or a reversal. So that, that might si signal the end of the downwards and momentum of the downwards trend. And you can see that it really happened. So it started correcting a bit sideways and they started appreciating and there was a nice strong rebound. Not a full rebound, but a strong one. So that was the near-term bullish signal that indicated a temporary uh, or temporary upwards momentum or the beginning of a tr of a, a new trend. Uh, zero crossovers now. As I mentioned, if it's if the asset moves above or below, let me just. So you see, if both of them. Uh, cross above or below zero, that's again the indication of a direction of the trend. So this cross over here suggested that trend uh, goes, it's an upwards trend. This turn below the zero indicates that the direction of the trend um, is um, southwards. A trader should always wait for a confirmed cross above the signal line before entering into a position in order to avoid getting faked out or entering into a position too early. So, one more slide, if I'm not mistaken, about MACD. Actually, this is everything that we have just discussed, but in in um, but like presenting all this in a chart. So as you can see, okay, this zero, it's our zero line. So over here we have both histogram and signal line below zero. But what is significant is the fact that histogram is below the signal line as well in extending so that's a bearish signal uh, with a strong momentum to the downside 
afterwards it changed from negative to positive. That's a bullish signal. And indeed, we can see that once these two turn to the upside, it was the beginning of a new trend and a long lasting trend, as you can see, because we had an aggressive buying because the histograms were way above signal and they keep going upwards and upwards and upwards and upwards. Now, if MACD falls below the signal line, so like in this case over here, can you see that? They were both in the positive territory above zero and our asset was in a rally. It was in an uptrend, uptrend MACD as well. MACD was moving higher, trend was moving higher, but suddenly in MACD, we could see that histogram over here fall below signal line. So that was the very first bearish signal indicating that the existing uptrend is running out of steam. It has reached to its end, which indeed is what happened afterwards. If the MACD turns up and rises above signal line, like here, that you see, it keeps it has some corrections, but it keeps increasing, increasing, and increasing. So that is the continuation signal that it will remain to the upside. Okay, it will remain in the same direction as the trend. So the upwards trend will continue. The signal that we are good to exit this uptrend, it was here when the histogram crossed below the signal line. Um, that's again the same example, obviously. Let me check for questions as well. Uh, no, no questions so far. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, MACD as a trend indicator. It's the same mentality, it's the same, same thing. But um, other than observing the chart and the candles, you can confirm uh the trend if the trend of the of the uh, of the price is going along with the macd so if macd is rising above zero and at the same time the price is also trending higher then we have a strong and a strong trend that will last for quite a long time uh, if we have if we see the asset moving downwards, being in a down channel, and at the same time we are seeing MACD falling as well, then this confirms that we are in a downtrend. And as long as we don't see any turn of MACD, any change of MACD, then this trend will continue to fall. Okay. So have you identified over here? Let me just draw, draw it. I will draw it. So here. It was the very first time that histogram fall below the signal line. So we weren't in an upwards trend because you see it was up, moving up, up and up until it turned. So it was the very first signal over here that the existing uptrend is running out of steam and is about to reverse. So this was the very first reversal signal. And as long as I was Day after day, that the histogram was still dropping and dropping away from the signal line. That was a confirmation that this is the new trend. Okay. Now, um, so and that was the exit level. But I'm gonna explain that a, a later. <clears throat> Actually, let's explain that now. So you see why this is an exit level of our downtrend because it seems that the sellers are run out of steam. What I mean, we have seen histogram going above signal line. And at the same time, we have found the support level. One, two, three, four, five days in a row, the asset wasn't able to extend further to the downside. It was stuck over here. So that in combination with the histogram going above the signal line, that was the indication that this decline might run out of steam steam, and we might see the reversal and indeed with this is what we have seen sorry okay 
the same stance for here as well. So um, another cross below zero for both of them with histogram well below signal line. So that was an indication over here that a new downtrend is about to start. It lasted for a few days. It bought to move here and it started appreciating, but we weren't sure. Is it a new uptrend? Is it just a correction? Who knows? So by monitoring the candles that are started getting higher and higher and higher, and with a combination eventually from MACD, a few days afterwards, that histogram turns above signal line and it keeps increasing and increasing, that was a confirmation that we could enter long either here or here when they both turn positive. Okay, this is how you interpret and use a uh, use MACD as momentum and as trend indicator. Now, so, uh, so just a second, did I skip a slide? No, I didn't. What we have over here, we have a euro dollar of four hour chart and below we have MACD. OK, this is an old MACD setup. We don't no longer have two uh, moving average on MACD. We have a single, so it's a, it's, it has been merged. OK, so these two lines have been merged in a single one like here. OK, but what I wanted to present over here is um, is a uh, it's the same thing that we have seen earlier. So let's assume that you are in a four hour chart and you want to identify the trend and the momentum. So you are using MACD for that. So as you can see over here, MACD turn from negative to, po to positive here. Okay. And it start increasing and increasing. So that means that momentum is is bullish and increasingly bullish at the same time okay over here we had some consolidation of our price action but we were getting higher highs can you see that regardless of how small the body counts are we got higher highs so that means that also the the price action agrees with the appreciation of macd now, if we check our Bollinger's, our sorry, our, our uh, exponential moving average, the nine and nine and um, the nine and, um, and twelve, we can see that they also appreciate it. They are also pointing higher. So everything is in line with a, 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 an upwards movement for the. Um, for the euro. So uh, don't worry about this example. I have better ones, but until we uh, reach to the ones that compose both indicators, let's start. Um, uh, the, let's go through Bollinger's and then to combine these two methods for setting up our strategy. Any questions so far? Uh, when the histogram are above the signal line in a bullish trend and then the histogram aligns with the signal, does that becomes a better signal? By align, I assume you're referring to a clash. So, uh, like, 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 let me find an example. Um, you're asking when the histogram are above the signal line, Okay, like this in a bullish trend. Okay, here is a bearish trend. Let's find a bullish trend. So when the histogram is above the signal line in a bullish trend, and then the histogram aligns with the signal line, so confluence like that. No, that, that's a consolidation. That means that it might consolidate for a bit. So this is it, which is not a perfect alignment, but it, it implies to a bit of a consolidation sideways movement okay this is what it is if um it's like that if it remains bullish yes but 
it, it implies to some consolidation. Can you see that? So it aligns, histogram aligns with the signal line above zero. Yes, that means that it remains in a bullish momentum, but in the near term, we, ha we are facing some kind of consolidation. You see, up, down, up, down in a range, some ranges in the near term. It's not always good, but uh, yeah, this is what it is. Should you put average true range with the MACD? Um, you could, but today's, uh, yeah, you, they, they can be combined, of course. Uh, average true range, more or less, is for setting stop losses and targets, but it's not, it's not my today's um, uh, strategy, dear. Uh, so today's strategy is based on Bollinger's and MACD together for a particular strategy, for a particular four-hour strategy based on a 15 minutes, um, 15 minutes entry. So, yeah, you can use average true range for setting your own stop loss and for setting your own, own uh, target levels. So you are using, I guess you are using ATR in order to set um, your target, your stop loss. But yeah, that's a different technique. That's a different strategy. OK, so until I have uh, uh, any further questions, I'm going to go through quickly Bollinger's because I really, really want to cover the strategy and not only the introduction to Bollinger's and MACD. So I get how may, are you all familiar with Bollinger's? Till I got no. OK, 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 OK. I have, anyway, I have uploaded the 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 slides about trading with Bollinger's, so I'm not gonna go through unfortunately today, uh, dear Robert, um, the introduction and the um, basics of Bollinger's. Okay, please read the material that I have sent, and if you have any further question, uh, come to me. I have also a video in regards to Bollinger's, so yeah, check them. And feel free to come back to me with questions. Just very briefly, is a band. It's literally a band. It's a band in which the price is moving into. Uh, it has been created by John Bollinger. That's why it's named after his name, 1980s. So uh, I, mean, I think it's one of the most popular. I mean, one of the top fives. Uh, but with Bollinger's, we are able to determine volatility, not always the direction, not always the momentum, but the volatility. Okay, the volatility. Uh, we, it is still a trending indicator. Uh, we can I uh, we can observe when using Bollinger we can identify whether the market is trending or ranging. Uh, but what is what we can derive from Bollinger's is the is the volatility. Okay, is the volatility uh, to measure the volatility uh, of the current market conditions. Uh, so Bollinger's are really giving us a range, a statistically defined range in which the price will be contained. Can you see? The price is moving within this range. So this range is the Bollinger Band range. So every time that the price is interacting with the upper line of the range or the middle line of the range or the lower line of the range, that gives, gives us different signals. So it compose, consists, to be more precise, by three lines. The upper one, the lower one, and the middle one. What is the middle one? It's simple, it's a simple moving average. It's a 20 period moving average, nothing else. So the middle is a 20 period moving average. And using this line, uh, using two standard deviations of the Middle, middle line of the 20 period moving average, we are getting the upper and the lower line. So the upper line is two, two standard deviations 
above the middle line and the low line a line is two standard deviation minus uh, the 20-day moving average, 20 period moving average, average minus the two standard deviations. So that gives us a lower line and an upper line. Okay, so uh, Bollinger is a very, very big topic to be covered. That's why uh, for those that they haven't studied Bollinger's, these might be a bit tricky, but I assure you that my handouts on trading with Bollinger's has a lot of details. So everything will be clearer for you once you read that one first. Okay. So as I said, what's good about Bollinger's is the fact that we can identify volatility and it gives signs of high risk signs of direction, size, size, signs of ranging market when the market is consolidating. Um, it helps us identify the direction and the market energy as well. What the Bollinger's cannot do is provide us buying or selling signals. Okay, they cannot do that. It's not like MACD. They cannot provide us entry levels. Um, that's why we combine Bollinger's with something else. We combine Bollinger's with candlestick patterns, we combine Bollinger's with RSI, with ATR, with MACD in this case, okay, because the Bollinger bands as such, it can only help us identify volatility and direction as well, but not entry levels or exit levels. Okay, sorry, not, not entry levels. We can identify exit levels. Um, so in this, in today's strategy, we use uh, MACD on the default settings. So 12, 26, so if you should check, let me get back to it. So our MACD is based on this default properties. So that means 12, 26, 9. So you don't change the value of MACD. And our Bollinger's are two period ones with deviation two. So again, default. I'm using the default uh, settings for today's strategy. Uh, if you study my handout, you're going to see that you can change the deviations and the periods based on the time frame that you are using. But I, I, I'm clarifying once again, in today's strategy that combines MACD and Bollinger's on a four hour and 15 hour don't change the default settings. This strategy is based on the default settings on the two standard deviation with 20 period one and the default MACD as well. So let's move on. And And I'm going to just uh, share something else with you. I want you to remember, let me just come on. Okay, this is off the records. It's on the it's on the Bollinger Band um, handout, but just very very briefly. Okay, you can see that. Okay, as wider the Bollingers are, can you see that they're wide? Here is narrow. Here are very very tight, close to each other. But if they are wider, the wider they get, it means that there is a high volatility in the market. We might see sharp rises, sharp declines, uh, big body candles, right? So when we have wide Bollinger Bands, this means high volatility. And you know that we want volatility because if the market is moving sideways, dodgily, the lack of volatility is not 
something that we could trade or is something that we could, I mean, it's just the price moving sideways, stay, stay a bit, a bit dodgy, be a bit uh, unchanged, but volatility is something that is quite good, okay, in a particular level, obviously. Volatility is something that we want because with this way, we can identify a trend uh, and we can identify that the market is following the trend, is following in direction. But so something that you in which you can identify whether the, the in the market there is a high or low volatility is the Bollinger Bands uh, uh, getting wider or narrow. If they're getting wider, that means high volatility, so sharp spikes or sharp declines. Uh, but if they are narrow, like here, you see how close to each other they are, are and even moving sideways, pointing to the left-hand side. That means low volatility, so that means very small price movements. Okay, that's something that is not ideal uh, for um, for trading. Uh, that's just something extra. Um, and before, okay, I'm gonna just stick a bit over here since we have people that they don't really have uh, have never used Bollinger's. What is a buying or a selling signal in MACD in uh, Bollinger's? Is every time that the um, is every time that the price is reaching the top line or the bottom line. So if it reached the upper line of the Bollinger, okay, and we are in an uptrend, okay, that means a continuation of the move, of the move, of the uptrend. If it touches the upper line, but we are in a downwards uh, trend, that it might be um okay let me find a better example okay here for example so here if bollinger is is in an existing uptrend and it touches the upper line then means that's uh, still further steam to the upwards. So that means that the upper uptrend will continue. But if it's in a downtrend, okay, it's in a downtrend. Uh, actually, yeah, if it's in a downtrend and reach and touches the lower line, okay, uh, that 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 indeed suggests weakness okay weakness but we need always to confirm whether it's a continuation signal or a reversal signal so how you can clarify because every single time just to be okay let's let's take it step by step every single time that bollinger's that the price touches the lines, the Bollinger lines, either the upper one or the lower one, there are two scenarios. Okay, there are two scenarios. There is the continuation of the move scenario or the reversal scenario. So, and this is why we need to be patient. If we've seen the price touching, being in an uptrend and touching the upper line, then we need to wait to see whether it will continue moving higher or whether it will start detecting. So in this case, it touched the upper line once, twice, three times, right? Over here, it touched it for the third time, then a build of a pullback, then a bullish one, and another bullish strong one that it broke the previous high. So that was the confirmation that there is a continuation of the move. Okay, if we kept having bearish candles down, then that was a reversal signal with the perspective to come down and retest the lower line. Now, if we're in a downtrend and our asset, like here, test and reach the lower line, 
So we have two scenarios. Is it going to continue moving lower or is it going to rebound? So we have doji doji bullish and another bullish. So here it was a confirmation that it was about to rebound and not extend lower. OK, so you need to be a bit patient. For identifying whether uh, it will be a reversal or a continuation of the trend. Now, what we have over here, when there is an upwards momentum in price, so when the price is moving higher, it is unlikely that and, and uh, it is unlikely that moves outside the ball, lower Bollinger Band will be sustainable. Such price moves can be used to time their long entries. So I'm going to explain right now what we mean by that. Let's just, okay, let's just give give me a second. So actually, let's take a step backwards. What I want to, uh, let me clarify a bit this bit that I have put on. So. If we are seeing, okay, like here, we are in an uptrend, right? Okay. If we are seeing the asset moving higher, okay, it, it is unlikely to see it testing the lower line because it is moving against it, it is moving on the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, so, with this way, this is an opportunity. With this, using these Bollingers, we can time our entries. What we mean by that? Over here, we have identified a possible entry level, right? So, turning away from the lower Bollinger, one, two, three, four, five consecutive bullish candles, another very big one that broke the previous resistance so that was a nice entry point right okay so we have bullish momentum bollinger's also started pointing higher can you see that the lines of bollinger started pointing higher so that means that we are in an uptrend so what do we mean by time the long entry using bollinger's we can identify when to exit the entry the long entry. So if we have entered here, okay, we can either stop the position, close the position as soon as it touch the upper line, okay, or that's one possible target level, or as soon as it retest and breach the lower line. So this is the way that you can time your long entry using Bollinger's, either by closing or partially closing your position every time that he's hitting the upper Bollinger, if you're in a long position, or once it start, start turning lower, once it start turning lower, you can either close your position once it cross the middle line or once it touches the lower line because remember you are in a long entry so touching the lower bollinger it might imply to a change of the whole trend okay so yes uh, i know i know frank so now um pin bars okay uh, why I brought pin bars in this uh, section? Because it's one of the of the things that we're gonna see in the strategy. You know that a pin bar can be a bullish sign, but can be a bearish sign. So if we have a pin bar, ah, oh, come on, pin bar presenting the lowest low of the current uh, session with the next following one moving higher, this is a bullish pin bar. If we have pin bars, okay, posting a relative highs, but then eventually uh, uh, we're seeing 
lower highs and lower highs, that's a bearish pin bar. Why I mention pin bars? Because pin bars are important to identify, first of all, whether the bears are in control or the bulls are in control, but also if we identify pin bars, we identify pin, pin bars uh, outside the Bollinger Bands or close or below or above the upper or lower Bollinger Band, that's a signal to enter the market. So here is a, finally, here is the strategy, dear Frank, okay? So over here, you can see that this, by the way, I've, I have merged over here two charts. This MACD, okay, this MACD is my screenshot for a for a four hour MACD. Okay, this is for a four hour one. The top, my chart above, is a 15 minutes one. Okay, 15 minutes. So so give a bit of attention right now. I have checked my MACD lines in a four hour chart first and I was able to see this. I was able to see uh, the signal line moving above zero line, sorry, the histogram moving above the, uh, the signal line, the, the, oh, sorry, the histogram turning above the zero line, so getting positive, the histogram. The signal line, though, was still below zero, okay? Eventually, they both turn above zero. But what it matters right now is this bit. Over here, we have the confirmation that MACD histograms have turned positive, but signal line is still below zero. So that's the one thing. This is in the four hour chart. Now, I went back to the 15 minute chart in my euro, euro dollar, 15 minutes chart, and I was trying to see what is going on in the 15 minutes chart. So I was able to see that my price action turned negative, not turned negative, I was started the downwards, uh, downwards trend. Can you see with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight consecutive negative candles, which end up outside Bollinger at below lower Bollinger Band. And not, not only that, they also, we have a pin bars over here, two doji candles, two pin bars below closing outside and below the lower, uh, the lower Bollinger Band. Remember that this is a bullish pin bar, right? So what we have over here is from the one side, a four hour chart that is a long term, it's a longer time frame, right? Down 15 minutes. We have a change of the momentum in the long term. And in the 15 minutes chart, which is a very, very tight time frame, we have a bullish pin bar below the uh, outside and below the lower Bollinger Band. So if your MACD line, your histogram line in a four hour, four hour chart is greater, so it's above the signal line and above the zero line, that indicates an overall upwards momentum. Second, if your price crosses uh, below Okay, below the lower Bollinger Band or creates a bullish pin bar. So it doesn't necessarily need to uh, meet both criteria. It will be either above the Bollinger Band or to create a bullish pin bar at the lower Bollinger Band area. That is a bullish signal. So um, you can enter long in a 15 minutes chart as soon as. Let me zoom in a bit. As soon as, let me zoom in, you get the confirmation that is ready to rebound. So we have bullish MACD in a four hour chart. We have a sell off over here 
So the Bollingers are outside the lower uh, line, but they didn't give an indication of further decline. Instead, we had a bullish pin bar and the very next two handles were bullish. So here is where, when we could enter long in the 15 minutes chart. Is it clear? Let me know if not. So that's another example of an entry, uh, of an entry, of a long entry. Again, my MACD is four hour. Okay, so I know it's a bit confusing. So what, what you can do is like go into the four hour chart. Okay, let me just, okay, let me clear a bit this message, delete everything, keep only, uh, keep only the, let's have a real example, real time. Oh. What happened? I think my PC is stuck. Uh, sorry guys. Ah, here it is. Okay. So let, let me clear a bit this mess. Let's keep on the Bollinger's. And MACD. Okay, here we are. So this is the four hour chart MACD, which is not a great example because it's okay. Okay. What we have over here, we have both a histogram and signal line positive. Okay. So that's done. So let me now go to the 15 minutes chart. So what are we getting over here? Oops. What are we having over here? Uh, okay. So MACD, four hour, positive, both signal line and histogram. Let's go to the 15 minutes chart. And what we have over here? Maybe It all close okay so in the 15 minutes chart what we have we have is the price down isn't it isn't it down you see that is down and what we have over here we have two candles three actually with long down legs outside so this one close outside the lower bollinger this one close higher so what we have is this we have bullish pin bar which close above the lower bollinger so actually by mistake i found the same example so can you see that we had the asset in a down trend in a 15 minutes chart closing initially below the lower Bollinger Band but the very next one came and closed above it okay so that's a pin that's that's a bullish pin bar um, with the overall MACD being bullish as well so that suggests here we are so you see Criteria number one, MACD line greater than MACD signal line in a four hour chart indicates upwards momentum. So that's done, identified. Second, price crosses below the lower Bollinger Band. Yes, it did cross. Prices create a bullish pin bar with a close above the lower Bollinger Band. Tick. So can you see that? Let me do it again. Here. It closed initially below the lower Bollinger Band and then back higher for two consecutive sessions. Can you see that? Two consecutive sessions. So that's a bullish pin bar. 
like it's very similar to that one this japanese uh, yen this dollar yen so in a decline initially negative closing below the lower bollinger band then the very next candle was bullish closing above it and the very next one was bullish so that's a long entry level Entering at that level and having in mind that the 20 period Bollinger Band line is ahead of you, where then you can take profit? Very nice question. There are several ways to um, uh, set your uh, target. Either using um, the previous relative uh, high, which in this case is that one, either using the middle line that, like you mentioned, or simply by using, I have it over here as well, have some alternatives, come on. Come on. Uh, okay. Okay. Or by using Bollinger's. Or by using uh, a number of pips below or above the entry. What do I mean by that? Okay, let's get back. So that's based on your risk and reward, uh, dear Audo. Okay. Um, so in this case, you can either use the relative high, the previous relative high as your target, or the middle line of the, the 15 minutes Bollinger, okay, as your target, or or you can use multiple targets. So the very first one to be your middle line and the second one to be the upper line of uh, of the MACD okay or okay this is our uh, alternative options or so let's assume that I have set my target over here so that's and I have taken my entry over here so that's around 21 pips target. So if I, my risk and reward is one to two, then uh, my stop loss should be halfway. So my stop loss should be 10 pips below that. So that would be somewhere here or so somewhere here or at the latest low. So the, the, the target and stop are, can be there apply using the Bollinger Bands, okay, or using the previous relative highs or relative lows, okay, or simply by using as well your risk and reward ratio. Okay, you cannot obviously set your target 20 pips higher and your stop loss another 20 pips lower, that would be one-to-one -one risk and reward. So it's a bit risky. Um, yeah, these are two options. Um, unless if you have a different exit strategy, you can adjust it. But what, what we use in this strategy, in this particular strategy, is either using a, a stop uh, as stop losses, uh, the Bollinger Bands. So in the case that you are going long, you can choose you can choose the lower Bollinger Band as your stop, okay? Uh, or you can use the previous low, okay? So the previous low based on the previous entry candle. So what I mean is like that. Um, so if our entry was that candle over here, the previous low was here which also by coincidence, it coincides with the lower Bollinger Band as well. Um, or as target, it could be again, the Bollinger Bands or the previous relative high. Okay, is that clear? But okay, feel free to adjust it on your, if you have your own uh, stop and target approach, uh, maybe you're using ATR, maybe you are using, I don't know, fractals it's fine as long as you keep your risk and reward uh, uh, you, it's in line with your risk and reward ratio so if i let's uh, let's 
let's assume that I don't want to use uh, MACD, I don't want to use, uh, I don't know, the relative highs and lows. I prefer to use fractals as my uh, way to identify support, uh, stop and stop and, um, and target levels. Where's my fractals? Come on. Where's my fractals? Fractals, fractals. Here it is. Okay. Okay, it's indeed true. So fractally was that pick that I chose earlier. So that could be my uh, target level. And a bit lower, the latest low fractal could be my stop loss. Okay, and if you measure, you can see that over here, my reward is 31 pips and my risk is 18 pips so that's that's nice that's a nice risk and reward ratio is nearly one to two so let me get back to the um, slides a few slides left and uh, we haven't covered the short entry to be more precise so remember you have this anyway so alternative entry levels could be either the cross below the bollinger band or if you identify a bullish pin bar that closes above the lower Bollinger Band, that could be an, a long entry. Or if you have identified, come on. Uh, yeah, well, actually, this is, is it. Now, for a short entry, are you okay, Odo, with my reply? Do you need any further um, clarifications? Let me know. Exactly. Yes, 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 you are right. Um, it's likely to find a resistance over here. You are absolutely right. But let's not forget that even if you find resistance, it tends, usually, it tends to retest it before it pullbacks. So it tends to touch it before it turns down. Okay, so... Um, yeah, but there are random ways to do it. So if you want to make sure that the the possibilities are in your favor, you can add some indicators. So you see, if you're you're absolutely right, middle line or apple bollinger act as resistance level. So we might say reversal. But on my defense, bollingers in the middle line, uh, the, the the price tends to break the middle line to be more precise okay and you can see it from the past uh, performance but either way if you want to and and en en to empower to empower your decision you can add also your fibonacci on and see where whether it's whether it's uh, a nice uh, target level is on the middle line or slightly below it. Let's assume of the 50 period moving average, which is a very key and important retracement level and resistance level. So, if this could be an alternative way, if you uh, think that it will not be able to touch the middle line. But that's why we are putting stop loss uh, with one to two risk and reward ratio. We are, remember we're trying to do as much as we can in order to have the, the uh, probabilities on our side, okay? But we can ne all, not always be right. We're just trying to go along with the stats. We're trying to um, be right most of the time, but we cannot be right all the time, right? I mean, we're just... Uh, do whatever it takes in order to have the probabilities on our side. Um, yeah, so short entry. The same thing, but vice versa. If our MACD presents a negative momentum and downwards momentum like here, so the histogram lines and the signal line turn negative, both of them. So that's a negative a downwards momentum. And in the 15 minutes chart, the price touched the upper Bollinger Band, just touch it, didn't break it, it touched it, and quickly closed below it. And you see, it touched it but it quickly close below it. So we have a price crossing below the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, so that's a nice entry 
uh, point pointer short, either if you see the price closing below the upper Bollinger Band, or if you see a bearish pin bar close to the upper Bollinger Band. So, so bearish MACD in the four hour one and bearish signal in the 15 minutes chart, suggesting that the asset fails to break the upper Bollinger Band instead, he retested it and quickly turned back down again. That's a short entry. You see that? So even if you're not sure, my dear Aldo, can you see? It retested it once. I will say, okay, I'm not sure what will happen. Let's wait a bit. I, I saw the next candle, retested it and closed dodgily, closed. But over here, it was, it was a nice signal. It was a nice one. Why? Because we have a long tail higher, but instead it closed very close to the open price. What that means? It means that regardless of how how much the bears, sorry, the bulls fight to push the price higher, the sellers took the control and man managed to turn the price back where it was. Even if that wasn't enough for you, the next candle was bearish enough with no tail downwards indicating that sellers are in control so even if you missed that if you missed that that was good enough to enter the market short either with target at the middle line or at the say at the down uh, on the lower line you might say to me but the lower line is far away that's why you can have multiple targets target one at the very first as your very first one, uh, the target one will be the middle line. With 80% of your uh, of your uh, of the money that you are risking on the very first target, it's just the 20% of the next one. Okay, that's just an idea. If you are, if you check our multi-target um, market multi-target webinar, you can see that you can have multiple targets, but you need to make sure that you are risking the majority of your position on the very first target and the rest on the second target. So if my position is one full lot, for example, I can have the 80% of the full lot in the with the target at the middle line and the rest 20% uh, at the second target. So can you see that it indeed eventually, uh, eventually touched? The middle line target, which was over here. So after one, two, three, four, five, six sessions, it hit my target. It didn't went down to the lower Bollinger Band, but it hit the first target. So that's alternatives. You can either alter use alternatives, the Bollinger Band lines, either the middle or the lower or the upper one. They can both use as stops or targets and uh, either the previous highs or lows. So you could either use this relative low over here as your target as well. And stop at the relative high was up here as your stop loss. Is everything clear, guys? Because we run out of steam and we are reaching actually the end of our webinar. So that was pretty much it. It's a strategy that is uh, exclusively focused on MACD in a four hour chart in order to identify the overall momentum. So the MACD in a four hour should be in line with our position direction. So if MACD is negative in the four hour one and we're getting bearish signals in the 15 minute chart, we can go short. If we're taking conversely opposite signals, then this shouldn't be applied. This strategy shouldn't be applied. Okay, so if we are getting bearish MACD in four hour and bearish signals in the 15 minutes chart, we can go short. If we are taking bullish momentum, bullish signals in MACD four hour one and bullish signals in the 15 minutes chart, we can enter long, uh, as soon as we confirm the bullish pin or the close of the price above the lower Bollinger Band. So the rebound to confirm the rebound with targets either at the Bollinger Band areas or the previous relative highs or lows 
uh, or why not using your MACDIS, your Fibonacci levels just for confirmation as well. Uh, um, I th that that's um, hmm. so. Um, Will you give us an ebook from this strategy? I don't have an ebook from this strategy. It's something that I tested myself uh, along with uh, the head market analyst. I'm not sure whether there is an ebook as well. Can you send me an email, Frank? I'll try to find something for you and uh, send it to you. Okay, so can you email me at webinars? At for as uh, I'm sorry, webinars at hfm.com and I'll try to find the material for you. Okay, so that was pretty much it, guys. Um, so we are we we uh, uh we are in the end of our webinar. If they are not, yes, that's the email address that's confirmed. No, webinars, not webinars. There's a type over there. Okay, webinars. Um. So tomorrow, you are gonna uh, gonna uh, go through the CCI um, indicator. So uh, CCI indicator is for commodities. Okay, if you are interested in commodities, uh, it's commodity channel index. How you can use it in combination with stochastic for uh, trading mainly commodities. But if I'm not mistaken, it's something that you can use in other markets as well but it has been developed for commodities base uh, mainly so it can be used in a combination with stochastic and it can help you identify key takeaways as well so i'm gonna call it date thank you very much for attending hope you're having a great day ahead uh, someone is asking something uh, what of the setting for trader Settings by default use the default MACD which is 12 to 26 and use the default Bollinger's uh, which is 20 with two standard deviation my dear Alicia okay I haven't changed for this particular strategy the settings okay so thank you very much have a great day ahead any questions please email me at webinars at hfm.com uh, and anyway anything you need we are here to help in Instagram Facebook YouTube telegram so feel free to contact us can you send it okay yes webinars at hfm.com uh, Alicia I'm not sure whether you have been here from the very beginning but we have three handouts in the handout section so please download them okay thank you very much have a great day ahead guys if you are new here please download the handouts that I have provided earlier uh, yeah uncle please download the handouts I have just I have put them on the beginning of the webinar it's in the handout section you know there are it's on the on the tool that, that you have on the uh, there is uh, somewhere that you can raise your hand that you can put a comment there is another one it's another section uh, in which we have all the handouts so please download them okay The topic is a strategy with combining MACD and Bollinger, okay, Bollinger Bands, in order to help us time our entry, time our exit, and obviously identify entry levels, okay? It's, I think it's a toolbar, Frank, uh, the same toolbar that you have, that you have in order to raise questions. So at the very bottom, there should be some, somewhere, uh, a handout section you know you have a toolbar right when you enter the webinar there was a toolbar and in this toolbar you were able to raise your hands to ask questions there is another button where the handouts are did you find it there are three three handouts yeah, okay, you found it. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day ahead and see you again later. Bye-bye. CCI with Stuart tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.